And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are watching live, we're back. It's game three. Uh, due to the uh, technical problem we were having with our uh, Skype viewing of the game state, uh, we missed the ending of game one. And we were actually going into game three here. Uh, it looked like Zach had uh, killed Kyle on game one. Uh, but, uh, in fact, uh, Maze's End activation could have won the game for Kyle, and uh, Zach, in fact, scooped. So, we apologize for that, but uh, we just had a situation where our screen, like, completely cut out, and we just could not see the actual end of that game, so we had to kind of assume what was happening. So, we're back for game three. Kyle, making his land drops like he does. Um, just sequencing out those guild gates. And uh, Zach, once again, without the fastest start his deck is capable of, but, you know, his deck really comes online uh, in the mid-game, you know, around turn four and five. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how this one develops. Kyle's going to want to get his engine online uh, quicker. I think that's definitely the turning point in uh, this game is uh, how quickly Kyle can assemble uh, his game plan or really start setting the pace for the game, where Zach is going to want to disrupt as much as possible with his uh, Pythian Needles, uh, obviously came down there, and uh, we see that, uh, obviously naming Maze's End here. putting the burden on Kyle to draw another answer. Um, so can I get something on what that card is that Kyle just played? Read the bones, maybe? Yep. That's a read the bones. So I like that in this deck because uh, not only does it give you raw cards, but in a deck that's really trying to generate a specific sequence of plays, uh, you know, lets you sculpt your next couple turns as well. Make sure you hit, uh, you avoid as many redundant guild gates as possible and uh, draw those uh, those unique guild gates that are pretty crucial to the victory of this deck. So Kyle's got to draw a couple of cards in sequence here. He's going to need an Abrupt Decay or a Vraska, which I believe are his only answers to Pythian Needle, uh, to get Maze's End going, or he needs to draw a Crackling Perimeter, which we haven't seen uh, resolve yet uh, this match. Zach, uh, repeating uh, his plan of the previous game, which is just resolve uh, Omen speakers and turn them sideways. Kyle puts a stop to that with a 3-3 three, three that gains him three life. Uh, definitely turtling up on the ground here. Zach's going to need, uh, you know, something a little bigger to punch through. He does remove the uh, centaur healer, but still, his clock has been slowed pretty considerably. He's going to need one of those big four drops to really start turning the screws here. Kyle indicating that he cannot block any faster should the Zoman speakers get in, which is exactly what happens. Zach is getting points in where he can. Of course, those gray merchants can really, as we saw last game, take the game out in, in quite a hurry, uh, given the proper uh, support. Now, we haven't seen that yet. No Night Drill Spectres or anything. That looks like another unique guild gate, and Kyle is starting to stack them up. Not under any real pressure here. No reason to blow one of your uh, very precious answer cards quite yet. There's a four drop. Not necessarily his scariest, but uh, nothing to sneeze at either. Certainly, uh, uh, there we go. Merciless Eviction takes care of Erebos. It... Uh, is a good answer to the gods, actually, as in Exiles. And uh, the fact that it turns off life gain is almost as relevant as his ability to draw cards. Kyle definitely counts on his deck's life gain to stay alive for the first half of the game while he sets up his, you know, his endgame engine. Four 
four mana from Kyle. And there it is. Gaining a bunch of life. That's a lot of turns against those Omen Speakers. Joe, what's the name of that card? I cannot draw, bring it to mind. Oh, man, that's a big life gain turn for Kyle. It's the green card that costs four that gains a life per guild gate. So pretty significant. Still no answer to that uh, that piping needle, which is something that's going to have to happen uh, before Kyle can really turn the can be said to really turn the corner here. Snap blocks. Oh, Savar. So uh, yeah, yeah. The gatekeeper. Not a card that people thought would see a lot of constructive play. But uh, the specific deck, it certainly is pretty powerful. Vraska, there we go. Oh, Counterspell. So, Vraska was one of the answers to Pything Needle. Uh, could have been very good there. Just let Kyle start uh, sequencing his game, be more proactive, less reactive. Uh, Zach doesn't have many spells to negate, uh, and uh, that just happened to be a pretty good one. So getting so excuse me, getting uh, maximum value out of that negate there. Obviously looking for an abrupt decay to uh, be an uncounterable answer to that Pythian Needle. All right, uh, Zach definitely starting to uh, to put that pressure on. Uh, it's gotten to the point where Kyle can't really take too many more turns to uh, to figure out uh, or to to draw into a sequence of plays that lets him execute his game plan. He's running out of those turns, which are certainly a resource, but uh, you know is finite for sure. But. That is a Ralzeric, I believe. Uh, pretty powerful in this deck. It uh, not only acts as a creature removal spell, but uh, untaps Maze's End. And its ultimate lets you take multiple turns, which uh, really lets you get... This deck, you know, with a Maze's End in play, multiple turns are a really big deal. So uh, a pretty interesting uh, card for this deck. I really like it in this deck. I know it's one of the innovations that Kyle and Cassie were real excited about uh, when they were working on this deck, but alas, Ralz Eric does, uh, does not stick around to make much of an impact. Count down to 17. Really needs a way to get that Desecration. Uh, gain seven more life with another Gatekeeper. Really needs to get the Desecration Demon off the board to uh, buy, would buy a lot of time. Can't block any faster. Still looks like he's going to end up taking seven. Oh, it's only two. Uh, oh, it's took six. Uh, But uh, definitely needs a sweeper or an abrupt decay, or both. Wouldn't be bad either. Uh, Zach just uh, keeping the pressure on, doing what he does best. The desecration demon was drawing and resolving that uh, while keeping those planeswalkers off the table is definitely a big part of Zach's game plan here. And uh, with such a creature light deck as Kyle's, desecration demon can really chew through a life total really quickly. So now we're starting to see Whip get active. Start flinging creatures at Kyle's face. Ugh. Generating uh, a good life total buffer uh, for Zach to keep him out of crackling perimeter range. The crackling perimeter can do like 10 a turn here, but it's still not going to be able to erase uh, 
the size of that demon uh, and uh, and whip. So it's got to be a sweeper here. Uh, that's got to be uh, really important. And then we can, you know, buy. Well, even the sweeper's not going to save him. It needs to be a pretty specific sequence. If we could see a turn like last turn where Kyle just assembled a, a really impressive uh, array of answers and uh, kind of fired them off in order to really kind of try to turn the corner. Of course, that was cut short by a gray merchant of Asphodel, but uh, that's the kind of turn it's going to take to stay alive here against that demon and whip. Looks like he's got some sort of plan. All right, and we are in time. We're in time for the round. We don't have a timer up at the moment uh, to show you the time left in the round. That's something that will be coming as we uh, as we sort of develop our technology here. So, going to be hard for Kyle to win the game. I don't know how close he is. Oh, turn and burn. Another counter spell. So he's going to, instead of turning, he tried to turn and burn the demon, did not happen. He's got to maximize his, his life total by feeding a creature of the demon. Uh, one hit from that demon is lethal. Draws for the turn. Plays a gatekeeper. That's important. Uh, as it gives him another card to sacrifice to the demon and another turn to get hit by the demon, uh, as well as turning off that incidental damage from the Omen Speakers. It's going to make it hard for Zach to close this game out in time uh, to prevent the draw, which, you know, again, without a way to move that Python Needle, it's not many turns left. Looks like Kyle may have conceded that game. Or uh, we ran out of turns. Joe, what, uh, what was the exact end of that sequence there? They drew, ran out of time. Okay. So, yeah, uh, it was just that situation where Kyle didn't have a way to assemble one of his victory conditions quick enough. Uh, with turns left, he uh, played very defensively there. Kept managed to keep that demon off long enough to for his <laughs> his best case scenario, which is that everybody wins. Everybody gets a point, right? Let's give everybody a point. So I apologize for our confusion that round. It's just one of those things with our uh, with our connection, the way we're set up here. It's going to smooth out in time. So stick with us. Check back, and. Uh, We'll see, uh, again, Modern is a little staggered start times from uh, from Standard. So if we can get a, a game of Modern in, the timing works out, we'll throw a game of Modern up on camera that's interesting. Otherwise, we'll stick with Standard, which has given us some great games so far. Uh, so no real reason to deviate from that. Uh, we'll be back next round, and uh, we'll kind of give you an update on what's going on in the tournament, what everyone's playing for, what kind of the decks are in the room. And uh, be sure to come back and see that. Uh, once again, we're Dayton Magic Club broadcasting Friday Night Magic here from uh, Game Haven in Riverside, Ohio. Thanks for tuning in.